What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the Google Pixel 5a. What is going on everyone? Jason here back from a little hiatus and pretty excited because today we're looking at this guy, Google's newest addition to the Pixel lineup, the brand new Google Pixel 5a. Now, if you're initially a bit underwhelmed, it's likely because Google recently leaked all of the details around the highly anticipated Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, which have a complete overhaul in terms of design and look amazing. So to look at the Pixel 5a with this older form factor and dated design, I don't blame you if you're not exactly on pins and needles about it. But to be fair, the budget A series of the Pixel lineup has always followed this direction of pulling from last year's design and keeping the cost low. And honestly, it's been a very successful recipe. So today I'm going to go over how my experience has been with the Pixel 5a one week later. I'll go over the phone's key components and talk about its pros and cons to ultimately help answer the question, is the Pixel 5a worth it? Now before we jump into the review, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, it really does help me out. And in case you're a tech junkie like me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the reviews. Okay first, let's jump into the physical design. As mentioned earlier, the Pixel 5a is going to look and feel quite familiar to anyone who's held either the Pixel 4a, 5, or the 4a with 5G. It has that very straightforward no frills form factor with the unibody design and rounded corners, holding true to the utility first approach Google has gone for for quite some time now. Now the body is made out of metal, which is noteworthy as it is the first A-series pixel to use a more premium build material. It does however have that soft touch coating on the back that ultimately does make the phone still feel like it's plastic, but the added weight is a welcomed addition no doubt. It's also the largest A-series pixel when it comes to screen size. It has the same physical dimensions as the Pixel 4a with 5G, but it has a slightly reduced bezel in comparison, ultimately giving the device a more immersive, flagship-like look and feel. Another minor yet unique feature of the Pixel 5a is the color. It only comes in this variant that Google cleverly calls mostly black. In the light, it kind of has this jungle green hue. I mean, it's not the most exciting colorway, but I do like the simplicity of it and it's less boring than just black. It also has some of the classic pixel design elements. You have the tried and true and now very dated fingerprint reader on the back. Again, they covered it in that soft touch coating, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I wish it was made out of glass or some other material to provide some more contrast. It also has the uniquely colored power button that is slightly rigid to provide some texture and the pretty subdued camera housing on the back that does nothing to add to the aesthetic of the phone. All in all, the Pixel 5a is a very basic device that has no real wow factor to it, but at the same time maintains a certain elegance in its simplicity and refinement. It's an extremely comfortable device to hold in one hand, when you don't have to baby the second you take out of the box, but also one that's not going to stand out in a crowd, which depending on who you are could be a good or bad thing. In my opinion, the most redeeming physical design component of the Pixel 5a has to be the display. It's a 6.3 inch OLED panel coming in at a resolution of 2400 by 1080 and it's a great screen. Google never made the Pixel 5 XL, so it is nice to have a larger display after using that phone for the past year. It makes consuming content a lot more immersive and enjoyable and the quality here is pretty good. The full HD resolution makes everything sharp, you get strong punchy colors, great contrast with the true blacks and HDR content comes off fantastic. It's also been great for doing some mobile gaming. The extra space really does make it more engaging and it's able to achieve this without being a pain to carry around. Where the display has its limitation is in its refresh rate. Unfortunately, the Pixel 5a has what now should be considered the dated 60Hz refresh rate, so you don't have that smoother UI navigation that you'll have in most phones now, which is a bummer because it's such an impactful feature when it comes to day-to-day -day use. I'm not going to dock Google too many points here, however, as this is a budget phone and it got the other components of the display pretty right. That said, it is going to be hard for you to go back if you've been using a phone with a good 120Hz variable refresh rate, no lie, but it's really not the end of the world. Now when it comes to the Pixel 5a's features and performance, again, it's pretty basic. Google decided to go with the same mid-tier Snapdragon 765G processor that's powering the Pixel 5 and the 4a 5G. It's not the biggest deal as it's still a fine processor that'll get the job done. Yes, you'll see some lag and stuff like the image processing, but day-to-day -day operation and even spec-intensive gaming is still fine with this chipset. Again, it can come off a bit lackluster with the announcement of Google's in-house Tensor chips that'll be equipped on the new Pixel 6s, but at the end of the day, the Pixel 5's processor performs well, and most importantly, helps keep the price down. Now, some more unique features to be present on this phone is number one, it has a headphone jack. Number two, the Pixel 5a is packing a pretty hefty battery. It's a 4,680 milliamp hour battery, and according to Google, it's the largest battery that has ever been on a Pixel. And honestly, after one week of using this phone, this feature, albeit boring, is likely the one I most appreciate. The battery life is extraordinary on this device. I mean, I've pushed it pretty hard while testing and I've never had to re-up in the middle of the day, and it's made the phone incredibly reliable. 
Now you don't get the bells and whistles like wireless charging, which can be a bummer, but it does support fast charging and does come with the corresponding cables and charging brick in the box. The Pixel 5a is also IP67 dust and water resistant, not something you're going to see in a lot of phones in the budget category, so this is another welcome new addition. It's also 5G ready, so you can take advantage of any 5G plans you may be on. And of course, you get access to pure Android and the fastest software updates. And the overall user experience is pretty solid. Now, the feature that gave the Google Pixel its street cred to begin with was the cameras. And the good news here is that you get the same stellar image quality with the Pixel 5a as the others before it. Pictures come out tack sharp, you get nice vibrant colors, the dynamic range is great. And I've said this before about Google's image processing, it's just really hard to take a bad picture with this phone. You also get a dual camera setup when it comes to the hardware. You get a 12 megapixel primary shooter and a very nice 16 megapixel ultra wide, as well as an 8 megapixel front facing selfie camera. Selfies also come out great, and Google has a slew of software editing features that really allow the photographer in you to nerd out with getting the best looking image possible. Now, as good as the image quality is, and I really don't want to discount that in any way because it can easily be deemed the best on any phone right now, the video quality is just not in the same tier. The 4K video coming out of the rear camera isn't bad, it's pretty decent, but it struggles with dynamic range and the colors aren't the fullest. It's just a stark deviation from the still image quality when it comes to overall usage. There's still no shooting 24 frames 4K, so you're limited to 30 or 60. Again, not the end of the world. And I have to hand it to Google, the stabilization on the video has gotten significantly better. And all in all, the cameras on the Pixel 5a are very good. You get class leading picture quality for sure. It's just important to know that this phone may not be the best for you though if you're really into video. Okay, with that said, the Pixel 5a one week later, I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised at how much I've enjoyed it. I mean, everything about this phone initially screamed boring, and I'm not even suggesting that perception has exactly changed to be honest, but man, it's been extremely enjoyable to use. This is by far the one A-series Pixel device that hasn't felt budget. It feels way more substantial in the hand than last year's Pixel 4a. I absolutely love the larger display and form factor, and it's fantastic value as this phone only costs $449. But the big elephant in the room is this. Almost everything about this phone, nice as it is, is pretty dated, let's be real. And that's likely going to be made abundantly clear when Google's own flagships drop later this year, and that may put the 5a in a tough spot in terms of market relevance. I do think it's a strong contender in the under $500 range of phones, but I worry that much like its predecessors before it, it's likely only going to draw strong interest by Pixel diehards, which let's be honest doesn't make up a sizable population of the consumer market. The Pixel 5a is a no-frills, reliable, get-the-job-done phone that is probably going to go underrated and will no doubt be overshadowed by the completely redesigned and remarketed Pixel 6 lineup. That said, boring isn't completely bad here, and I definitely wouldn't rule out the Pixel 5a if it's on your radar. But hey, that's just me, and I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the Pixel 5a? Do you think it's a worthy phone in the budget category? Or do you think the design is just too dated? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. That's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.